let's start with the, the big news of the week. Richard Wood signing a, a new deal. I imagine you and you and Richard and everyone else at the club is delighted to get that sorted. Yeah, like I say, we we've been working uh, behind the scenes, obviously trying to um, negotiate with boys and, and get the lads and, uh, ready for you know what we say ahead of the next year or two, whatever it may be. So. Um, Really pleased that Woody's agreed and accepted. Uh, he's a big part to to what we want to do. I think you've seen the importance of him since he's come back into the team after his his injury that that he couldn't shake on his calf. And um, one of the big reasons why we signed Woody in the summer is because he's so robust. Um, although he may be a bit older, um, he's very robust and never really picked up many injuries in his career. And uh, for us, it was really disappointing, and, and for Woody, it was disappointing that he missed a huge chunk of the season. So. I'm delighted to have him on board for another year. With his age, do you see it as a gamble at all, or is he still as, as good as he ever has been? No, nah, he's fit. He's a fit boy, Woody, and uh, you know his his positioning, his know-how, his uh, his organisation skills, his leadership skills. Him, you know, even having a conversation with Woody, if he doesn't play every game next season, what he will bring to the likes of Joe Olawu, Jay McGrath. Um, younger players, you know, like Bobby Faulkner and Will Flint, um, it's going to be huge, you know. So, um, as well as you know, helping Tom and Tom is an experienced lad, but we're he's seven, eight years older than Tom. So it's, um, and I think we've seen the Tom Anderson, you know, the performance of him has been has been very high. And I'm not saying that's down to Woody, it's that that's down to Tom performing well. But Woody certainly helps that. Um, as well as the fullbacks, and uh, I think it's a bit—it's a really good uh, signing for the football club. Yeah, defenders who can defend, if you know what I mean. Yeah, absolutely, and um, <clears throat> puts himself into positions to defend. I think you know, early part of the season we were conceding a lot of goals from crosses. Um, Woody's great in terms of organising people and, and talking to people and telling people where to show them, so he can get himself into position in, inside the box. Uh, as well as Tom and, and Jay and Joe, um, boys who you know have, have played games this season for us, so it's a good uh, good signing for us. Anyone else close? I know you, you said you've got conversations ongoing with several players. Yeah, a couple of other players have signed new contracts. Um, I'm sure the club will release in good time, uh, so that's pleasing. Um, so yeah, we're working hard to to try and you know keep the ones that we think can can definitely impact this next season. Um, and then hopefully add to it in the summer. Do you feel this has been a real mantra since you returned to the club? Because last summer a lot of business was done early. In January you managed to get business done early. You're trying to get business done early now in terms of retaining players. Is that a marked change in terms of where this club's been over the last few years? I don't know. I can't speak about the last few years, Adam. I have no idea what you know what went, what happened and what went on, really. Um, all I'm doing is trying to put a competitive group on the, on the pitch, a team that can perform and, and win games of football. Um, we feel like we've got a really good change, and I've said this all season, we have got a really good group of boys here. Unfortunately, times in the season we've missed 14, 15 of them for, uh, in, in spells and certainly hindered us and hindered the consistency of the results. Um, but I think what we've seen over the last 10 games particularly, and, and maybe from, from January onwards, is a, is a team that's you know, from January onwards, top four or five in the division, and from February onwards, top of the division. Um, and I think that's down to the consistency of team selection, players being fit, players pushing the players that's in the team, um, players chomping at the bit to be involved. Um, decisions I've got to make uh, every week now of who I even put on the bench, not about who I put in the team. Um, so it's, it's certainly made us stronger as a, as a, as a unit. That was going to be one of the points I was going to make today, Grant, the fact that you now finally have strength in depth and it's knocking on April. You know, the likes of Walters and Nixon didn't even make the bench last time. Are you are you frustrated in a way that it's taken this long or, or are you kind of just, look, it is what it is and this is a real sign that we've got a good group here and we can make a real challenge next year if, it, if the, the miracle doesn't happen this year? I'd say a little bit of both. Um, the winner and me obviously frustrated early part of the season. Um, but pleased with the second half of the season in terms of where we are with the group and the strength and depth, like you say. Uh, so it's, I'm also a little bit old in the tooth. I've been around a bit. I know that injuries happen in football, um, and you, you can't not worry though. And I try not to worry about them when they when they happen. I try and focus on the on the boys that are fit. But it's uh, it certainly helped us over the last 
yeah, two or three months. With that in mind, is there anybody else out for this week? Anybody else back, or are you, you still in the, the same kind of healthy squad that you have? Still in a healthy squad. What's what's been pleasing this week is we've seen the likes of uh, George Miller out in the grass, Bobby Faulkner out in the grass. Um, George is coming along nicely, which is really pleasing. Um, in fact, quite a bit ahead of schedule. Uh, maybe George will see in pre-season um, and Bobby. Um, so, yeah, we're Jack Senior's not so much there yet, but working hard to try and get back in. Lawler's been out in the pitch as well. Um, yeah, so we're starting to get people gradually back all the time, which is pleasing. Was it a real sign of progress against Forest Green that you weren't necessarily at your best, but you got the job done, you got the win, you got a couple of goals, you got a clean sheet? I thought it was a tough game. I, you know, I knew and anticipated it was going to be a tough game. I didn't anticipate Forest Green to sit back off as, as much as they did in the first half, which in turn made it a little bit difficult for us because we, we, we struggled a little bit to break them down, even though we had some good moments and good chances. I think back to, to Moll's chance and Owen Bailey's header at the back post and, and things like that. So we had chances to score, but we just didn't do it. Second half, I felt we upped the tempo. Um, once we scored, we knew they'd have to come after us then, which opened the game up a little bit more. So um, I was pleased we, we got the job done. Broadly speaking, you've had a 50% improvement in goals scored, goals conceded, points that you've, you've taken. Have you had a situation where you've seen such a, a change round, a reaction in your, your management or playing career so far? Because it's been quite remarkable, really. Um, yeah, I mean, I think back to... To, to my time at Hull in League One, the week, League One season, I think we even threw a spell around Christmas time, January time, where we we didn't win for a bit, and then, and then we we went on a winning run, and actually a run that took us on to win the league. I can't remember how many wins it was. I think it might have been twelve wins in, in the last fourteen or fifteen games or something like that. Um, helped us win the division, and um, you know I've always stuck by what you know. The season is 46 games long. People make predictions, a lot of predictions early in the season where teams are going to finish and some can be correct, but some can be way off the mark. And um, we've got eight games left. We'll approach every game like we've done over the last, well, in fact, since we've been here at the start of the season, we haven't changed. We've been consistent with our messages. What we've seen is just a consistency of performance and results over the last couple of months. So. We'll stick to, to what we believe in and uh, and see how many wins we can pick up. Is the Easter weekend a, a real test of where you're at right now with, with two teams around that top seven? Yeah, I think it's a Easter weekend, Christmas period. I think these are things that managers look at and players look at because these are opportunities for you to pick up points in a short space of time. Uh, we're playing against, obviously, Crawley tomorrow. A very strong, um, you know, I've, I've been impressed from from what Scott's done there um, with, with them this season, a team that's been um, recruited from lower leagues and things like that and been put together and you can see there's a real team spirit there. They, they work so hard, they've got a real clear identity. Um, it's going to be a good footballing game for sure because I think it's two teams that want to play football. So it'll be a good game. Um, I believe it's sold out. They've been really good in terms of the ticket pricing. There's, there's quite a few Doncaster fans going. Um, so it's, I think it's got the makings of a, of a good game and obviously the, the Tuesday game we'll worry about that when it comes but it's another a very strong team in the division in, in, in Wrexham What do you see as, as Crawley's strengths? What are you going to have to be wary of? They're, like I say, they're a good footballing team they play with confidence they can play through you if, you're not, if you don't get the press right um, they've got forwards that are they're in, in good form in Orsi and, and Lolas um, midfield are sharp and they can move so yeah, it'll be a tough game, but we approach the game like we do every game. We'll we'll put a plan in place and see if we can go and get the three points. Just finally, Grant, there's a few uh, Scots in your squad. Have you enjoyed this week with, with Northern Ireland's victory? Oh, don't you worry. I've already dropped it into James Maxwell and a few of the coaching staff. And um, yeah, it was a good result for Northern Ireland. It's, it's pleasing to see because um, you know Michael's. It's been a bit of a tough time for Michael since he got in there. He's got players retiring, players that's coming to the end of their career, and then what we've seen is the is the youth and the youngsters coming through, the likes of Connor Bradley and Trey, Trey Hume, and uh, you know these types coming through. It's 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 great to see because there's there's so many good young Northern Irish talent out there. At the minute, young boy Callum Marshall was on the bench. He's got 
loads of goals for West Ham's 21s, got himself a move to West Brom. So there's, I think there's a lot of good potential coming through Northern Ireland. It's pleasing to see, and I'm sure Michael will get the best, and there's no better man to, to get the best out of him. Have they taken it well, like Sir James Maxwell and, and others, or have they bit him back a little bit? No, nah, I, just, I just dropped it in. You know, I just walked past him and asked him that they watch the game. So, uh, yeah, it's nice to see. I mean, they've, gone, they've, they've picked up a really good uh, draw away from home against a team that's qualified for the Euros, and, and, and they've gone to Scotland and won at Hamden. So it's um, really pleased, I think, uh, you know, good signs for the future for Northern Ireland.